Uh, this is Paul. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just sitting here and I was thinking, um, I was thinking about getting a massage and I just don't have any money. <laughs> now, quite a few persons, they like to take care of their physical body. And I was, I was wanting to read the Bible this morning. Yeah. But there's what's known as the sky. Yes. Uh, the upper atmosphere above the earth. Yes. The celestial region, yeah. <laughs> and quite often, my actual physical health, yes, is affected by what's in the sky. Now, I know a lot of you, you would think, well, what's it matter? The actual atmosphere. <laughs> but then I thought, you know, if I'm not feeling that good myself, how does a, fa how does a, a plant feel? Yeah. <laughs> Now, let's say uh, I wanted to know what was above the sky on Arctic, on the Arctic, yes. There's a little seed bank up there that uh, Bill and Melinda Gates invested in in the event of cataclysmic uh, destruction of humanity, yes. And they probably have a radio antenna up there, yeah. <laughs> Could you get me the seed bank in the Arctic uh, where they invested X number of hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. Because I'm concerned about the sky. Let's say we're going 5G. Yes. And, of course, uh, you would want to have Internet access while on the Arctic. Yes. While you're sitting there looking at every known type of seed that could be used to, well, really replant the world. <laughs> now, for a plant, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot to say. <laughs> but I think that plants are really not considered when we develop different types of technology. Yes. Now, let's say I had a nursery, one of these greenhouses, mm -hmm, that I made out of, uh, out of sand, because sand is the ingredient in glass. Yes. I used a little solar furnace at 10,000 degrees and melted up some sand, mm -hmm, maybe in the Sahara. And the glass is uh, bulletproof glass. I mean, it's really, really strong glass, like crystal. <coughs> And I put one of these little fireplaces in there with the salt fusion generator, and I heat the place up to about, oh, 150, 200 degrees. And then I decide, well, I might as well put some water in there so it's a very humid location so the plants can grow. Yeah. So I'm growing all these very expensive plants, and I decide, well, let's put the 5G in there. Yeah. And let's saturate the plant life with 5G, thinking that it must cause a stimulation in the cellular level of plants so as to want to, to well, I could make them want to grow. I could talk to a plant. Now, I'd put this in the Arctic. Obviously, there's not a lot of nurseries up there. You have to uh, import all the food supply. Yes. And having one of these greenhouses that is humid, I can plant all those seeds and germinate them really good and uh i could have a fresh food supply for all the individuals that work on the arctic yes it could now there was what was known as shoots yes c-h-u-t-e-s mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and i'm sure 5g is good for plant life i mean i'm almost absolutely sure because technologies take into consideration yes. the cellular effect of each and every innovation yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, could you get me the Arctic poop and any radio antennas on the top of the north part of the Earth? Yes. But then there's the South Pole. No. There's Antarctica. Oh, po -po. Now, of course, you have to get Internet access in Antarctica, and you're going to have the 5G down there. <coughs> I just want to know of all the global antenna systems. <coughs> Uh, the effect of the 5G on the growth of a plant. See, when you want to control, I mean, really control, there's nothing like making a plant grow. Isn't that right? <laughs>